Welcome to Using Digital Dilemmas to Explore the Complexities of Online Life at the Connected Learning Summit. My name is Kelly Mendoza, and I'm with Common Sense, and I oversee our education programs. With me today, I have my colleague, Daniel Vargas Campos. Hello, everyone. My name is Daniel, and I am part of our content team, and I'm super excited to be here with you today. Great. And um, we are going to share with you the concept of a digital dilemma, how digital dilemmas are a powerful strategy to teach digital citizenship, and also how can digital dilemmas be used with students. And this will be a short and sweet overview and introduction to the concept of dilemmas. And we have um, additional resources at the end if you're interested in um, using this with your students or in your learning environments. So I wanna start by asking you a question to think about in your head, about where you stand on the following issues. I'm gonna share with you a statement and I want you to think about whether you agree or disagree. If someone texts you, you should respond as quickly as possible. What do you think? Do you agree or disagree? Just think about it in, in your head. If someone sends a naked picture to someone else, it's their own fault if the picture ends up getting shared with other people. What do you think? Do you agree or disagree with that statement? And it's okay for people to share violent videos online to call attention to what's going on in the world. Again, do you agree or disagree? These examples are, um, examples of what are called knee-jerk reactions. So they're sort of a beginning of a dilemma. We don't know the whole story of what kind of violent videos are we talking about or what's the situation where somebody shares a picture and so forth. But the reality is that we face and youth face all kinds of dilemmas in their everyday lives, their everyday digital lives. And so, um, the reality is that there's no right or wrong answers, um, as you can imagine, to these different dilemmas, and that there's a lot of different feelings and thoughts about um, what what course of action should be taken. So, oops. Um, so this is harkens back to research led by Carrie James and Emily Weinstein at Project Zero at the Harvard Graduate School of Education. And it's around educating with digital dilemmas. Common Sense Education um, has had a long time partnership with Project Zero and with Carrie and Emily. And their research has very much guided our approach to teaching digital citizenship and many of our resources. And so um, a few years ago, Carrie and Emily were asking the question, how are young people navigating the thorny issues of digital life, the complex issues, and how are adults supporting them with those complex issues? And Carrie and Emily did um, surveys and interviews with educators, parents, and youth. And they also started creating, and we worked with them to create interventions to teach about these complex dilemmas that don't really have a right or wrong answer. And um, I just want to mention that um, Carrie and Emily have a book coming out in August called Behind Their Screens. And um, they're presenting on Friday at CLS, if you can catch them, probably be talking more about that. And so um, working together, we realized that, goodness, dilemmas, digital life is complex and that there's a lot more we could be doing around using di dilemmas and digital dilemmas to talk about these complex issues that youth are facing online. And so what exactly is a digital dilemma? A digital dilemma is a tricky situation involving digital media in social or civic life with no clear right or wrong answer. So um, you noticed before those knee-jerk, um, shorter dilemmas could easily result in um, deep discussion, but that there's not really a right or wrong answer on those issues, that people may have different perspectives. And in Carrie and Emily's research, they did find that indeed parents and educators and students often had very different perspectives on those dilemmas. 
So in young people's lives, they are faced with various dilemmas each and every day. Um, and I'm just putting a bunch of, of them on the screen um, that we heard from young people that they face and that we actually have the digital dilemmas resources about, whether it's memes and joke that cross a line, maybe it was something that was supposed to be funny, but was read by racist or sexist by um, somebody else. Um, we're going to have an example on fake accounts today and um, the dilemmas around having a fake account and how you're using that account. Um, and then also um, other big issues like hate speech or free speech for that matter. So there's all kinds of dilemmas that young people face and we need to support them with um, facing those dilemmas in their everyday lives. So we found that digital dilemmas are a powerful tool to teach digital citizenship. And we really refined um, not only the dilemmas themselves, but ways that you can use them in conjunction with other learning activities. So dilemmas are, are powerful because um, they're really a low tech strategy. You don't really need any sort of technology to talk about a dilemma with your students. And they provide an opportunity to center your students' voices and perspectives because they're very much about um, identifying your own perspectives and listening and hearing and even taking on and trying on other people's perspectives. So it's a lot of dialogue and listening, perspective taking. Um, it also, the dilemmas also address the unique environments that young people are navigating and the emerging trends in their culture. So here's an example on the slide of just some news headlines, uh, whether it's, you know, something happening on TikTok. Um, there's a lot of resulting issues from the pandemic and um, what it means to be in school or using technology in and out of school or, um, you know, stress and mental health issues. And there's also, um, you know, the idea of fighting racism and hate speech online and so forth. So rather than talk about those issues in a big way, because they're very big, unwieldy issues, the dilemmas can really center and provide a specific example that then could be blown out to address um, like issues or the bigger issue. And it helps to focus on something smaller to then have that discussion. So um, we incorporate dilemmas in our teaching of digital citizenship at Common Sense. And we have a few different frameworks that um, they intersect with. One being uh, what we call the rings of responsibility. And this is a way to think about our responsibilities and our roles in digital life. And that um, there's uh, obviously our responsibility to ourselves, but, uh, but our um, close community and then the broader online world. And that what we do online and how we participate and communicate has an impact on these other audiences. Some of them we may not even know or see and that we want young people to take ownership of their actions. And so we, there are different kinds of dilemmas that you can use to get at these different um, levels of responsibility in digital life. I'll be sharing one about relationships or relational issues. And Daniel will be sharing an example on a civic dilemma. Also, um, digital dilemmas, they can be unpacked in different ways. I mean, they can be analyzed in different ways, but we've found that it's very powerful to unpack and ponder them using thinking routines. And um, for those of you in the Project Zero audience, you're very familiar with visible thinking and thinking routines. And um, with Carrie and Emily at Project Zero, we collaborated on um, creating thinking routines that are unique to digital citizenship, but actually you'll see that they could be applied to a, a variety of contexts really. And so um, we're gonna focus on two, one is called feelings and options. It's a thinking routine that supports um, SEL skills and decision-making for social and relational dilemmas. And so that's really what it's designed to do. It's been tested and piloted in classrooms and really refined over the last couple of years. Take a Stand is a thinking routine that is exploring um, dilemmas about community and civic life. So it's slightly different process. Both of these are thinking structures and processes that you can use with students to 
help them think through and explore the dilemmas. And lastly, we believe that digital dilemmas can foster digital citizenship dispositions. So we aim to foster these five dispositions in digital citizenship teaching. Um, and um, again, you can, there's more information if you dive into it, but um, slowing down and self-reflecting is one, exploring perspectives is another, seeking facts and evaluating evidence and envisioning options and impacts and taking action. So you can see how um, even just at the top level, thinking and analyzing through a dilemma and with a thinking routine can lead young people through these dispositions in different ways. And I think one of the most powerful things we hear um, around exploring these um, with other students and with other adults too in the classroom is actually um, taking perspectives is very powerful um, when it's you know done in a um, respectful and safe way in the classroom to realize that um, we all are coming with different backgrounds and have different perspectives on these different life dilemmas that we face and that there are um, different options and decisions that we can take. So I wanna start with an example of a relational dilemma, um, which is things that happen more in relationships with friends, families, teachers, coaches, um, things, people that we know um, well in our lives classmates. And so this dilemma, and you can see it's much bigger than the knee-jerk reactions that I showed you earlier, because the dilemmas um, have been developed to include a good amount of detail, but not so much that it's sort of stifling the discussion and um, uh, enough meat to unpack on the dilemma. So this one's about a fake account, and I'm going to go ahead and read it and then read through what the next steps would be. So John and Kat had been close friends since elementary school. One day, Kat discovered a private Instagram account with John's picture on the profile. Kat already followed John on Instagram, and although a bunch of other kids from their school were listed as followers, she immediately suspected that this wasn't one of his actual accounts. Kat requested to follow the account, and once she was approved, she saw that what had been posted, a series of memes that showed pictures of John with anti-gay captions and comments on each post. Several of their classmates had even joined in and were also posting hurtful comments about John. So you can see how, um, you know, a young person may have encountered something like this. I mean, we are hearing that um, young people do create fake accounts and it's not to say that they're using them in detrimental ways, but they could. Um, be using them in detrimental ways. And this is an, an example of like actual issues that we are hearing, but obviously sort of the, the nuance around, um, you know, these aren't real people, but by the way, these are all fake names and everything, but um, the situation is relatable to young people. So, oops, my... Okay, so um, in order to think through that dilemma, we would use the feelings and options thinking routine that has four steps. And this is very much inquiry-based learning. It's a lot of asking questions and a lot of processing. And um, the resources that we have that we share with you will tell you exactly how to go through this. Some pieces can be done as writing assignments or whole class assignments or in small groups. So it just depends on um, your setup and your students. But you're going through these four steps, identify, feel, imagine, say. And we really want students to get to know, identify, feel, imagine, say, and what happens in that thinking process. So um, you would first identify who is involved in the scenario and what dilemma or challenge are they facing? So you can think of it yourself based on what I just read to you. But we had Kat who encountered this fake account and then we have the her, the schoolmates that are commenting on that account. And then we have John who may not even know that that account exists and that the account is um, including anti-gay slurs and, and um, memes about him. So it's first you identify who's involved in the scenario, knowing that in digital life, there's always a lot of people involved and it's not just one person. 
Then we look at feelings. Um, what do you think each person is feeling in the dilemma and why might it be a challenging or hard situation for them? So we can talk about Kat's feelings. You know, we can talk about John. What if he does know that fake account exists and that he can't control it or can't take it down and, um, you know, it's um, causing him, you know, stress and embarrassment and shame. I mean, we don't know for sure, but this is what's interesting about the dilemmas. You can, it's just the right amount of detail that then you could explore these other options. Now, once we've sort of level set who's involved, what they might be feeling, then students move to imagine, which is probably my favorite step of feelings and options, where they're imagining how the situation could be handled. Um, and their their goal is to just brainstorm all different ideas. No ideas are bad ideas. What could Kat do? You know, um, should she approach her classmates? Should she go to a teacher or some other trusted adult? Um, what if she did nothing? Um, you know, there's a lot of different imagined possibilities. And then ultimately students pick one and then they identify what they would exactly say or do very specifically if they chose that option to respond. If they were cat, what exactly would they do? What exactly would they say? And they leave with a very practical, concrete advice that the idea is they now have a way to think through this kind of situation they may face in their digital lives and even like the words that they might do use to address it is, is the thought behind it. So that just gives you a little taste of the activity. Obviously there's a lot more um, scaffolding to it, but um, we found that there's a lot of different ways you could implement dilemmas and Daniel will have another example for you in a second. But one is um, you could do weekly journaling and class discussion with the feelings and options dilemma or civics or kind of mix them up. And the goal is for, get, for your students to get used to these thinking routines and use them repetitively um, so that they know like these are the steps. So the journaling, you know, students could journal and come back and discuss certain pieces together as a whole class or in groups. Um, but it's the idea of you're getting them used to creating these habits of mind and dispositions. Then um, you could also use the dilemma as part of a digital citizenship lesson. So we incorporate um, these dilemmas into our digital citizenship curriculum at Common Sense um, as, a, as a piece of that core lesson. And then lastly, um, you could use it as a response to something that happens in school or current events that are happening so um, if something were to happen at the school, which it, you know we, we do hear challenges, schools tend to react and um, you know, or not know what to do or you know, want to do an uh, education intervention. These are helpful ways to do that without making it be necessarily about what exactly happened at the school, but about these issues overall. And so that dilemma that I shared with you, you can see that we're talking about um, anonymity, disinhibition, what happens when we're anonymous online and can share things. And then also there's bullying and um, hate speech happening too. Very broader issues you could tie to. So um, I'm going to pass it to Daniel to share one of our um, new civic, dis civic dilemmas. Thank you, Kelly. Um, uh, I'm super excited to be able to share with you the latest type of digital dilemma that we've created, uh, which addresses issues around civics. Now, before I dive into the actual dilemma, I wanted to provide a bit more context of why we're moving into addressing civic related issues. Um, you could go to the next slide, Kelly. So when we were prepping this presentation, I was thinking about you know the fact that we are co-presenting um, with other folks who are in the HX space. Um, so how can we tie this idea of digital dilemmas and the broader human experience that students encounter um, in their digital life? One of the main reasons why we are addressing civic learning is because one, um, re research has shown that Gen Z, so our younger students, are engaging in civic discourse and, and be, ha are becoming more civically engaged um, than previous generations. Now, that amount of civic engagement happens primarily in online spaces, 
And because of that, there's a lot of issues and challenges that students have to navigate. Now, one of the challenges or like the most prominent challenges that students need to address, uh, uh, navigate, which connects to the broader concerns that we have in, in, in the field of human experience is this notion that you know, the digital platforms that young people gravitate towards are really blurring the lines between what it means to be um, a consumer of information, what it means to be a creator of content, and what it means to build relationships with other people. So as young people are engaging civically, they're having to navigate this digital information landscape where all these roles that in the past in an analog environment were sort of separate from one another are kind of like getting convoluted. And so the dilemma that, that you're gonna see next um, is really trying to parse through all these different roles and hats that students wear in, in their digital lives. Um, okay, you could go to the next slide. Um, so I, this is a pretty long dilemma. So I'm just gonna briefly give you a summary for what's happening here. We have two friends um, that are friends offline that both like to create um, and consume memes. Their friendship becomes strengthened because um, both of them join a online community that's all about sharing and posting memes. One of the friends goes so far as to become so active and so engaged in this community that he becomes a content moderator. This is where sort of like the paths start to diverge. While one of the friends is assuming this more, more responsibility as a member of this online community, the other one's still participating, but how they're participating and what they're sharing is shifting a little bit. So we see Sasha in this case, start to po post things and content that's kind of like pushing the line and causing, and causing Jordan to feel uncomfortable with what they're saying or what they're, they're seeing being shared in this online community. So there's a lot to unpack here. There's a lot of different challenges that you know, we could gravitate towards or like have students kind of like debate and talk through. But the big idea that I want, to, that I want you to get away with is that this dilemma, while addressing all these complex issues, is really getting at a core topic that we are dis discussing in society. And that is, what is our responsibility when we are in online spaces, when we see hate speech or conspiracy theories spread? Do we take action? Do we let it slide? By breaking this or by exposing the nuance of a situation like this, we're able to get students to really think about practically what they would do if they were in this sort of situation. So to help students navigate through this dilemma, we paired it alongside our take a stand thinking routine, our take a, which is a routine that emphasizes this idea around perspective taking. So when students go through the take a stand step or they're considering or their own what the dilemma is in the first place, they're able to put they they able to put a hat or like the perspective of one of the or, or both of the characters. So they're able to scaffold how they think about the different levels of issues that are happening. So for example, they are able to consider um, you know the friend the offline fr friendship component, how the tech then comes into play and that impacts that relationship and how even how you participate on online spaces and the responsibilities they acquire as an active participant in those memberships might shift or um, alter how you engage with friends that you know from before you were in that online community. Um, you know, as this is mostly a discussion-based activity, so students are able to think through what their opinions are, they are then scaffolded or the activity is scaffolded so that they, they are able to have a conversation with one another and share those um, insights that they have from the dilemma. And they're, they, they're able to talk about it, reflect about it, and then see each other's perspective and create a space where they have the ability to change their opinion or to see things 
from a different perspective. And that really is the power of thinking routines is, and, and the dilemmas is really to be able to meet students where they are, give them the space to reflect on their digital life and equip them with that like critical thinking for how to apply that knowledge and those experiences to similar situations that they would see in their day-to-day -day life. How we implement this in the classroom, um, our theory of change, and this is in the next slide, Kelly, is that dilemmas are really kind of like the, the engine that could propel what we call digital civic agency. So some of the issues that you know we need to contend to in the civic realm might feel very big or like controver controversial to teach at school. What dilemmas are, allow, allow you to do is take the learnings from like basic uh, information literacy. So like we're able to introduce students to things like what is the psychology behind conspiracy theories, really grapple with how that influences their daily digital lives, and then take those learnings towards like being active ethical creators in, in their digital life. And so the dilemmas are kind of like what hold all of these different pieces together and really empower young people to be active ethical creators um, in, in the digital world. And that's how we are framing sort of like our civic learning content um, around empowering students to, to address those tricky issues that come up that are related to tech and, and civic engagement. And back to you, Kelly. Great, thank you, Daniel. Yes, and um, those are all um, new dilemmas and lessons that we have. So I'd love for you to check them out and let us know what you think. Um, so overall, what we're hearing from teachers and students is uh, about this approach is that they they like the real worldness of the issues. It's something concrete. You know, the example that Daniel just shared is a concrete example. Um, that students may have even seen or possibly experienced or they may experience. And we wanna equip them with um, the habits of mind to deal with those real world, world issues. Um, they also, students especially love the space for dialogue and hearing different perspectives. You know, too often, even with digital citizenship, they're talked to and they're really able to lead the, the discussion. Um, they're provided a framework to then have a productive dialogue um, and, um, hear that there's a variety of perspectives on these issues and also try on other perspectives and be more, um, motivated to be open to possibly changing their perspective as well. And, um, lastly, practical takeaways. So we do want to leave young people with actionable things they can apply to their own lives. So it's the dispositions, but also oftentimes they're creating the language that they may say if faced with a certain situation or um, deciding that, yes, if they see hate speech or something that makes them uncomfortable, have a strategy of what exactly they're going to do. So um, we hope that this gives you a taste of the digital dilemmas um, as a pedagogical strategy for digital citizenship. Here is um, where the resources live. There's um, student handouts, there's teacher guides, there's wonderful videos as well in the civics lessons. And um, we look forward to hearing your feedback. Thank you so much.